So today we're going to learn how to do USB logging with an Infinity ECU. The Infinity has two main methods of data logging. The first one is using a PC log. That can be started by simply pressing Control L on the software. Once you see that, you'll see that the software starts logging your data down at the bottom there. Once you hit Control L again, then the data will stop logging and then it will ask you whether or not you want to save the data that we just did. You can go ahead and save it, you know, create a file name for it, save it wherever you'd like. Now if you want to set up USB logging, the first thing that you're going to want to do is figure out which channels you want to data log. So once you're connected to the ECU, which you can confirm by going up to the top here, where it says USB Infinity Series 5, this being what we're connected to right now, if it's green that means it's live and it's all working well. So we'll go to logging, and then channel setup. Now this whole list right here is a huge amount of channels that you can data log from the ECU. Now I'm not expecting you to sift through this entire list and find the channel that you want. Instead of doing that, you can just use the search function up here and say you want to use the throttle. Then every single channel that has the word throttle in its name will come up right here. If you want to add this channel, then you can go ahead and just double click on it. Then you'll see it come right up here on the right side. Let's also say that we wanted to log Lambda 1. We'll just search that up, double click on it, and then it will end up right on the right side. Another way to do this is also load a predefined list of channels. So you can do that by using these buttons down here at the bottom. Let's use our first button here and clear the list of channels that we just added. Now let's go ahead and click load. Now by default, the log channel list is found under documents, AEM, and then infinity tuner. And once you get there, you'll see a bunch of log channel lists all over. These are just ones that we've created for you, some basic templates just to get you started. So let's say we want to add just some basic tuning, then let's go ahead and click on that. You can see that it's a pretty basic list, but it's got air temp, battery, coolant temperature, engine speed, everything that you'll need here. If you want to add any additional channels here, you can always go to the search and add anything that you'd like. Or you could also click the append button, which will add more channels from our list that we've made. So let's go ahead and click append. And let's say we're using a turbo car, so we want to use turbo car related channels. We could go ahead and add boost control. So now you can see that it's added on the boost control channel list alongside the other ones that we just added about a minute before. And you can keep on doing that. So say maybe you want to add knock, then you can go ahead and do that. And then maybe you want to add some timing diagnostics. You can do that as well. You can really add any of these. And once you're done with this list, you can always just go ahead and click OK. Or if you want to use this list at a later date for another car, maybe another ECU, you can go ahead and just click save right here. We'll go ahead and save this as USB log channel list test one. And so once you click OK, the ECU will now know to log all of these channels. The next step is to set the logging rate and the logging conditions. So that'll be done in the wizard right up here. So we'll go to wizards and then setup wizard. And then under advanced setup, you're looking for USB logging. So what you see right here is typically what the logging conditions look like by default. So this right off the bat will look pretty good. This by default will have it start logging as soon as the engine starts running, as we've seen before. So it's set to log above 350 RPM, but speed and map are both set to zero right now. So you can go ahead and change that. So you can use all the way up to 32 gigabytes of logging, which is a lot. So logging all the time, essentially whenever the engine is running, that's not a big deal. But if you want to go ahead and change that, that's totally okay, you certainly can. You can also set so that the logging is based on a switch by clicking this check mark right here and by setting the switch input right here by this list. Let's go ahead and leave these settings alone other than the fact that we'll change the USB logging speed. Right now it's set to 20 hertz, which means that it samples each channel 20 times per second. 20 hertz is decent, but for what we're doing, we may want to jump that up a little bit. We'll go ahead and try 50. So that'll give us a nice fast sample right there. Once we're done with everything you want to do there, you can go ahead and just close this setup wizard. Next, we're going to make sure that our USB memory stick is working well. And then we're going to go ahead and format it and then set up the file naming. So we'll go to login up here and then git logs. Now this is the window that you would go to to download any files that is normally on the memory stick. You can just leave your memory stick plugged into the ECU and then your laptop plugged into the ECU. You know, just like normal, just as if you were going to tune the car. Normally you'd see a list of log files here, but since we haven't actually taken any logs yet, right now it's empty. So the first thing we're going to want to look at here is in the upper left. Notice that it says USB FAT device. That just tells us the current status of the USB memory stick. It's telling us right now that it's formatted in a FAT format. That's just a common Windows formatting. FAT is formatted to be compatible with all versions of Windows. It allows you to take the files and just plug that memory stick into your laptop and download them normally. The Infinity is designed to take the FAT formatting, but there are a couple disadvantages. 
you won't be able to log as fast or as as many channels. Also, let's say that you're racing on the track and your car loses power suddenly, everything that was being logged right there will be lost. That's because the ECU was currently logging when the power was lost, so it never got a chance to save. But if you use a raw format, which is an infinity specific format, even if you lose power like before, you won't lose your data. Raw format does mean that the USB stick does have to stay in the ECU. If you want to change the stick from raw back to fat, you always can do that, but you'll have to format the stick using Windows and not the ECU. So let's go ahead and format the memory stick into a raw format. So to do that, we'll go ahead and right click here and then go to format drive. It will ask to make sure that you want to delete everything on here and then reformat. We'll go ahead and click yes. Just keep in mind that everything on this memory stick, whether or not it's a data log file, will be lost. So if you're alright with that, then we'll go ahead and click yes. So just to make sure that everything was formatted properly, we'll go ahead and close that window, and then we'll do a full power cycle on the ECU. So we'll turn the key off, wait for the ECU to disconnect, turn the key back on, and then we'll go back to get logs. So now you can see that in the top left hand corner, it has been formatted as a raw device, so everything has worked great. So now that that's formatted correctly, the ECU is now ready to log. Also, if you want to change your file prefix here, you're going to need to do that before you take your first log here. So right now, ours is named ECU file, but we'll go ahead and change that. Let's go ahead and change the file name to AEMVW, which is one of our test cars. We'll keep the file counter at zero, and then we'll click apply. So now it'll start using that new file name for all of the logs that are going to be taken from this. So now that we're ready to take a data log, let's go ahead and just start the car up, and then we'll let it idle for 10-15 seconds, and that'll give us enough data to really look at it. So now that we've taken our log file, we're going to go ahead and just download that file. We'll head back up to Logging and then Git Logs. You'll see here now that we have one log file created. You can also see the file size here, that'll give you a good indication of how long the log was. So then you can go ahead and check this mark right here to select the file. Then you're also going to have to choose a save path, so we'll click on there and then we'll just make a new folder for this. We'll call it demo logs. Once you're done with that, the file is now ready to be opened up in AEM data. Once you've saved the file, you can also open this up in Infinity Tuner. To do that, you'll go to File and then Open Save Session. You'll then select the file that you saved. So this is just a message saying that you're connected to the ECU right now, would you like to disconnect to save this file? And we'll click yes. And then you'll see right there is our log file. Now there may be some cases where you didn't necessarily log every channel. So for example, if we go over to this tab, you may see that some of these channels just show zero or no data. And that's fine, that just means that you didn't record those channels. So if you want to log those channels, then just make sure to add those to your log channel list that we showed at the beginning of the video. You can also open this log file within AEM data. So if you have a project file open, then you just go to this left button over here that says open log. And then you can go ahead and just select the file that we saved before. And then there's your log file that you just made. If you have any other questions about AEM data, make sure to let us know in the comments so we can help you guys out. And make sure you subscribe so you can learn more about AEM data.